guys, it's Momo. Oh, that was really loud. It's Momo. <laughs> today, and today, we are talking about Six of Crows by Lee Bardugo. It was amazing. I loved it so much. I finished the Six of Crows duology last weekend. I finished Crooked Kingdom, but this video is not about Crooked Kingdom. This video is about Six of Crows. Keep in mind, there are going to be major spoilers for the entire book in this video. But first, in case you don't care about spoilers and you're uh, here anyway, I'm going to read the little description on the back of the book because why not? Okay. Caterdam, a bustling hub of international trade, where anything can be had for the right price. And no one knows that and no one knows that better than criminal prodigy Kaz Brecker. Kaz is offered a chance at a deadly heist that can make him rich beyond his wildest dreams, but he can't pull it off alone. A convict with a thirst for revenge, a sharpshooter who can't walk away from a wager, a runaway with a privileged past, a spy known as the Wraith, a heart render using her magic to survive the slums, a thief with a gift for unlikely escapes. Kaz's, Kaz's crew are the only ones who might stand between the world and destruction, if they don't kill each other first. I love this book so much. <laughs> it was so good. Like, if you like YA fantasy and, like, morally gray characters, read it. It's so good. Okay, now that I'm done gushing after I read the back of the book, and now that you have the little, I'm not giving anything away, but here's something that might interest you, um, I'm gonna talk about it. And I'm gonna say it one more time, major spoilers for the entirety of Six of Crows in this video. Okay, so Six of Crows was a lot. Like specifically like towards the end of the book, it was a lot. But I wanna talk about the beginning of the book before they head to the ice court. So after we've been introduced to all the characters, because I'm assuming if you are watching this video and you ate it this far that you have already read the book. Hopefully. But if you didn't, the characters are Kaz, Inej, Jesper, Wylan, Matthias, and Nina. And I have been saying Matthias- I, I- the whole time I was reading the book, I was saying Matthias. His name is not Matthias, his name is Matthias. His name is Matthias. Thank you, Shadow and Bone TV show, for correcting me on all of my pronunciation. Also, I now know how to pronounce Fierda. I said Fierda wrong in my last video because I had no idea how to say it. But now, thanks to the Shadow and Bone TV show, I know how to pronounce everything and it's great. <laughs> so, back to the Crows and back to Six of Crows, not the Netflix show. Before they leave, for the Ice Court, which is, way, which is the building that they are breaking into to go get a scientist, for 30 million Kruger. Yeah, that's, that's what they're doing. <laughs> so there was like a decoy ship, the boat that they were gonna take to the ice court. There was a decoy one and there was a real one. Kaz told everybody about the decoy one because he knew they were going to get ambushed by other gangs from Kirch, which happened. That whole fight scene, I was like, what? I was like, what is going on? And then the boat, like, blew up, and I was like, I was like, what? Now they, how are they gonna leave now? And then Kaz was like, oh, by the way, there's another boat. And I was like, you need to stop doing that, Kaz. Like, just tell everyone the real plan to begin with. I, uh, just saying. And then, of course, Inej gets hurt during the fight to get to the ship. And then Kaz goes back for her without his cane. And you know what he says to her? This, this man, you know what this boy says to her? I protect my investments. Um, sir. She's kind of dying, and you say I protect my investments to the girl you have a crush on? 
I get it. You can't express emotions, but still. God, Kaz. So they all get on the boat on their way to the ice court. The best conversation of the entire book happens. I think I have it memorized at this point. It's the, um, oh, if Pekka Rollins kills us all, I'm going to hire Wyland's ghost. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have Wyland's ghost teach my ghost how to play the flute to annoy your ghost. <laughs> And then that was Jasper saying that, and then Kaz was like, Well, I'll just hire Matthias. I'll hire Matthias's ghost to kick your ghost's ass. And then Matthias chimes in and just goes, My ghost won't associate with your ghost. <laughs> like, it's the little moments in the book that remind you that they are still teenagers and that they're kids, and like, you know. It's like the little conversations like that and they all have like their little their little moments and it's so cute. <laughs> that is my favorite conversation that they have throughout both books is just my ghost won't associate with your ghost. <laughs> I call it the ghost conversation whenever I bring it up because I just think that's adorable. <sighs> then they get to the ice court and pretty much all hell breaks loose. <laughs> but I feel like that was expected like Going into this, I had, okay, so we're gonna make the plan, try to execute the plan, have the plan go completely off the rails, and then just throw it out the window. And, that, and that's pretty much what happened. That's, yeah. What I did not expect, though, is that Inej getting herself taken by the guards at the ice court was actually a part of the plan like I didn't think that was a part of the plan because clearly Nina didn't know it was going to be a part of the plan like none of the no one else knew it was going to be a part of the plan except for Kaz and Inej which I thought was really cool because oh also maybe they did all know maybe Nina just didn't know because she was with Inej I don't know but I thought it was really cool that when Nina and Inej had to dress up like they are girls from the menagerie in Kerch coming from Kurtz to the ice court that in that that like part of the plan was like for Inej to get taken by the guards and like found out by Tain Helene which I hate Tain Helene with a passion I mm, like the umbrage of Six of Crows the umbrage of Six of Crows because, like, no one likes Umbridge, no one likes Tain Helene. Absolutely no one. And she gets, like, found out by Tain Helene, and they, like, take her, and then she meets up with, like, Wineland and Jesper in this, like, hallway that's, like, completely, like, lined in glass. Um, in the, in the prison that they broke out of. As part of their plan to get into the ice court. Like. And then they break the window, and they steal a tank! That was so cool! Like, I thought that was, like, it was just so cool, like, Inej is doing, like, her little, like, acrobat thing to get out the window. And then they just steal a tank! And they're just, like, winging it, figuring out how to drive this thing, and they plow it through a wall in the ice core, and that's how they escape! And it was awesome! Like, I loved it. Because, meanwhile, you have Jesper... Wylan and Inej going to get the tank, and then while that's happening, you have Nina, Matthias, and Kaz, and now the scientist's son, because apparently the Fjerdens took care of the the original scientist they were supposed to get. So they have like this random child that is the scientist's son that they're going to bring back to Kerch. They have Matthias, Nina, and Kaz. That's it. And they have, and they got Kuei, and then once they got Kuei, Kaz literally blew up a tree so that they could go into the water that was under the tree, because then going into the water would wash them up on like a little like beach somewhere, and they could escape with the tank with everyone else. And I'm like, okay. And then, you know, 
doesn't the water thing doesn't go too well and Kaz kind of almost dies but it's also kind of re but it's also really funny because Matthias is like I should let you die <laughs> and it's just funny because they're the friends that like they're like constantly like going back and forth at each other but like they are friends you know it <laughs> I love it that whole scene I'm like was I on the edge of my seat the whole time yes was it absolutely hilarious yes this is me screaming about six of crows which what did you expect you expect me to have coherent thoughts about a book no so they do that they go to the tank they're leaving they're going to the harbor to go back to their boat then they are pretty much ambushed by like <laughs> The entire Fjerden military and the Druskel. Which the Druskel are like Grisha hunters. They go after all the Grisha and they're like, no, we don't like Grisha. They're really annoying. <laughs> and lo and behold, Nina straight up, just to save all of her friends without even hesitating, takes Judah Parham and goes like crazy on the Fjerden. And I'm like, and like while it's happening you're like yes nina but you're also like oh no nina you just took param what the hell <laughs> and Mateus tried to get her not to take it but she didn't she didn't care she did it anyway and then there's like and then there's a really like sad moment between Matthias and nina on the boat when they get back to the boat and I'm like, uh, I cried. I cried. I'm like, uh, I was like, no. I was like, no. I was like, Nina's gonna be okay. I'm like, there's another book. Like, Nina is fine. I'm not gonna say anymore because this is about Six of Crows, not Crooked Kingdom. I'm not gonna say any more than that about that situation. So yeah, they're just like on the boat. They're vibing. They're thinking they're gonna be rich when they get back to Kerch. <laughs> Lo and behold, they get screwed over by Jan Van Eck, who is the person that sent them to the ice court to begin with, and plot twist is Wyland's dad, even though we already knew that it's a plot twist, because I don't know if I said it in this video already. Because <laughs> I have tried to film this three times! <laughs> so, yeah, they all got screwed over by Jan Van Eck, and we find out that Jan Van Eck does not care about Wyland at all, and all the crows were like, dude, like, why do you, why do you not care? And he's like, mm, he can't read, so like, he can't be an heir to all of my money. And I'm like, I don't like you. I don't like you, Jan Van Eck, okay? You know, so it's pretty much Kaz and Van Eck one-upping each other for 20 pages. Then Kaz makes the tiny, when, and then when Kaz makes like the tiniest little glance at Inej, and then Van Eck takes an edge. And the last thing that I'm going to touch on, the twist at the end. There was, cause obviously, you know, it was a twist that like, Jan Van Eck was totally like, never gonna give them all this money and all of that. But of all people, that Kaz could have gone to, that he could have ended up going to for help when this happened. He goes to Pekka Rollins. Pekka Rollins. Of all people, you go to the person that you want to take down. You say in the book multiple times that you were going to take Pekka Rollins down brick by brick. And you go to Pekka Rollins for money for help after the whole Van Eck situation. What? You know what, but it was okay because then Kaz calls Inej his girl. He's like, I'm gonna go get my girl back. And I'm like, ah! And I was like, he just called Inej his girl. Was it a narration? Yes. Does that matter? No, because he still said it. I loved it. This was 
a lot of me talking about Kanej. But that's okay because they're absolutely adorable and I love them. Yeah, the next video I do is probably going to be this same thing but about Crooked Kingdom. So stay tuned for that. That'll be very much, very much Nina and Matthias focused, very Helmic, enemies to lovers at its finest. I love them. So yeah, that's me screaming about Six of Crows <laughs> for however long this is because I don't know how long it is when I'm filming it. But with my rambling said and done, I would highly recommend Six of Crows to anyone who likes fantasy stories set in fantasy worlds, who is down with morally gray characters, and I don't know, I gave this, if I had to rate this book, I'd give it five stars. It was absolutely amazing. But yeah, I would recommend it if you like fantasy stories and, I don't know, like heists, I don't know. Just read it. That's what I'm trying to say here. Read it, watch the Netflix show. It's worth it. <laughs> so I hope you guys enjoyed me rambling on and on about Six of Crows. So hopefully now that I've rambled, you will go read it. And I will see you next time when I talk about the sequel. <laughs>